Good morning. This is the uh, morning report from Pflugerville, Texas. Good, uh, well, good afternoon to all me Limeys and Scotsmen and and uh, oh, I think they're no, that's right. It'll be late in the evening in Australia on Monday. So I woke up about mm, 5.33. It was a warm 58 and was until a few minutes ago when it dropped and that little drop caused some minor misting precipitation. That's why I'm up under this tree is because out there it's getting a little bit damp. And we have the early morning liquid meth run at Starbucks. I don't really have much to say this morning. I've been avoiding uh, any making any videos because I really had to let my voice rest. My vocal cords were and there's almost there, actually when I woke up there was no wind. It's starting to pick up now to five mile, 10 mile an hour a little. But I think we're supposed to see the sun today. That would be nice. And uh, the only thing I had this morning is uh, actually one hypochondriac had pulled up and parked on the, and I got a feeling that they were actually just getting their shit together to go around into Starbucks. And some guy, black dude, Pulls up, parks in the handicapped parking, right in front of the door, and gets out. And actually, we're dressed in the same colors, black and tan. I don't know if you can see that there, which is like a no-no in like Ireland. Black and tan is not considered a cool. It has to do with the military. You got to understand the Irish. And this jumped up jackaroo, black dude, black fella, uh, comes up and stares at the deal. I go like, I begin to kind of chat him up, but you know, he's got you know, he's got his earbuds in. He's all like ready to go. He's he's got on a jacket, but his jacket probably cost about five times more than mine because it's like a special jacket. And I'd say, judging by his demeanor, he's probably actually the first person ever in his family to make it to maybe middle management. And he said, I think so he initiated by saying, they told me to be here by, I told him it's, it's not open. <laughs> Duh, door didn't open when you walked up there. It's all motion. And uh, <laughs> they told me to be here. He said, they told me to be here by, at 6.45. I go, they don't make appointments, sir. That's, this is my clinic. I mean, I am a patient of Scott and White. I said, it's not really a real clinic. They don't. They, there's no lab pickups. They don't really almost never draw blood. They almost do no tests at all. It's They have no drug room. I didn't throw that part in there. He actually thought he was so self-important that they were going to actually show up on, when this is a time of year where, because it's not good weather. It's, he may have had a legitimate reason to come, but my God, he was obviously up by five o'clock, you know, bathed, shaved, dressed very spiffy. There's a lot of people that come in there. They just dress very extremely casually. And... He's getting kind of huffy that they have not opened the doors for him yet. Please, dude, this is Pflugerville. <laughs> it's not, you're trying to, you know, if your problems are that bad, go to the fucking ER. But he, one point in time, he goes all passive aggressive on me. He goes, uh, is that a sleeping bag? Duh. I go, no, no, it's a, technically it's what we call a, a fart sack. 
Yeah, I'm trapping my methane in here and so that uh, Greta Thunberg can sniff it later or whatever. You know, it's, this is a methane trap, sir. You know, of course it's a fucking sleeping bag. What the fuck? You, you, you really must, like, you're acting like you're not from here because everybody knows I sleep there, including the ownership, the management of the place. I have their, you know, full and complete, you know, actually express permission to sleep on that bench. They have access. They know I've got a. Here's a guy who's really probably got almost nothing wrong with him, demanding service at 645. If you really need it that bad, there's a business over there that's full emergency, you know, probably level two trauma shit that you can go to that's just a couple blocks away. 24-7 emergency. Anyway. But I just... When somebody can see it's a sleeping bag, for them to ask, is that a sleeping bag? It's not a legitimate question. It's a passive-aggressive way of saying, what the fuck are you doing in front of my clinic in a sleeping bag? Sleeping, yo, fuck. Actually, he was... I'm 20 years older than him. Fuck you. Need to show a little fucking respect. Actually, I've had that with a problem with a lot of black folks here who finally have made it to the east side, like the Jeffersons. And they actually think that I'm going to like... I remember that last time there was a black woman that I've talked to before, and she will like park kind of candy corner blocking all the traffic and she knows she's sitting and she's inside of a really an amplifier you know a speaker box and i have to project my voice i'm not going to be projecting my voice at all anymore i'm going to just anybody pulls that shit again this is the symbol they will get from me it's technically not illegal the middle finger is illegal but this is not illegal and it conveys exactly precisely what the fuck I mean. So, actually, I think it's still misting out there. I don't really, I only had one cup of coffee. I'm well rested, though. I slept at least like five, six hours, probably slept about six hours straight. The old bladder didn't wake me up. What eventually woke me up was all the fucking noise. And I just found it kind of humorous that I was trying to let the guy know that there's only one employee here. And even the lady that comes in at 620 every morning is not here. Yet he continued to pace back and forth until finally the one person that was there may have spotted him on the camera or something and came and unlocked it. I said, as soon as they unlocked the door, I said, you can go in now. Just to fucking let him know that you're not fucking, it's not your clinic, it's our clinic. And I sleep out front because they know I got a broken arm. I would gladly sleep on the ground somewhere out of the wind. If it weren't for the fact that I did that right after I got out of, I slept on the ground, but I had something nearby to grab onto and I had to put a little pressure on a broken arm and actually managed to do that three times. And then I was telling Bruno, I think I better not do that no more because there's something loose in there. Because they were giving me, trying to make me think before I was abruptly kicked out of uh, West Oaks uh, Rehab and Skilled Nursing Facility for not complying with their, well, your idea of physical therapy was me bouncing like a beach ball around a fucking like, you know, other 60, 70 year old people who had had strokes or were in dementia. They weren't doing anything to, all they really wanted to do was trap me there so they could get seize every bit of my income. You know, a black man with an attitude like that will go far here, but he will go far only with non Texans. Native Texans ain't going to put up with shit like that. I certainly didn't. I was laughing in his face because he's going to be in there. You know, he says, well, they take my blood. 
Yeah, but what do they do with it after they take it? Because the I already told them, I already talked to the the guy who drives the blood sample van. Usually, if you're a real clinic, you're doing tests all day long. You take tissue samples, urine samples, blood samples, and they get picked up. They have to be picked up while they're fresh, even though the container, the sample deal may have some preservative or fixative in it. Fixative. It still needs to be picked up and tested promptly so that they can contact you the next day with the results. Now, they've probably taken his blood before because he insisted on it, and it probably went in the dumpster out back. Let's be realistic here, people. That's a milking shed for overinsured, rich-ass fucking hypochondriacs. I know I've talked to them and shit. They've been around them. They get, they're, these are really the bad ones, the ones that think that they have diseases that they do not have. Otherwise, hypochondriasis is simply an abnormal, typical American obsession with one's health. Healthy eating, you know, healthy living, going to the gym. You're a fucking hypochondriac. You know, a lot of people I know, especially my own family, like my aunts that made it to 100, you know, and shit like that. They love to grind a good, fresh you know, piece of pork in the morning, and especially once they got to like denture stage when they're you know 90 years old or something. Yeah, and they love the. You know. I had one aunt that uh, she was still at 90 years old. She was still dipping snuff, and she would actually put that powdered snuff <coughs> inside her cheek. You know, this was the days before packaging it. That was on my father's side. And now what they call snuff is actually just ground up tobacco, not even powdered tobacco. Put inside of a pouch for... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, well, it's kind of a typical, typical day in summer in England, but... It's actually a fairly typical day in December here. Although usually a lot warmer. Anyway, I'm talking too long. Uh, I think later today, I don't know, I might have to get me a bottle of scotch. To, I don't know if I can really afford that. The Christians have just totally shut me out. Uh, let me see what's my total revenue from the uh, from uh, in the last 13 days I've seen uh, been given one $20 bill uh, uh, two fives and about uh, $21 bill so yeah <laughs> thanks a lot appreciate that in a town where people regularly, on a daily basis, spend three hundred dollars on scratch offs and gam, you know, just on lottery. That's not abnormal here at all. Yeah, there's one lady. It's, she's actually, she's, she's a uh, allergic. You actually can't be allergic to non-protein. You can have a pseudo. She comes up there. Used to come to the store regularly, and she just takes over. You know, she. <laughs> she'll come in with a few hundred bucks and she'll start buying scratch offs and go over to the little stand and she's got on the, on her scratching hand she wears I don't think that's nitrile that's she's wearing a latex glove on her latex allergy hand she's a little bit shy of so I don't know what I'll do today I may go up if you can see it over there uh yeah, that's it, right? That big giant ass, about 40 foot roof on it. That's a big ass bowling alley. I wonder how I'd do. I haven't bowled in about, mm, about 50 years, but I don't know. I'm feeling up to no good today if you can't tell by my demeanor. 
I sure as hell wasn't going to take some passive aggressive shit off a black dude in Pflugerville, Texas, who thinks he's all muckety muck and shit. Fuck you. You ain't shit, buddy. I ought to catch up on my. Yeah, I know I missed a couple of few. Fuck that. Is that a. Is that a sleeping bag? No, sir. It's a. Tech, the technical name is Fart Sack. I wasn't about to take that guy fucking seriously. He was taking himself. If he actually thought. And they still, like I told you, they did not unclick, unlock that front door until 7 a.m. I didn't decide to do this video till 7.39. It's now 8 o'clock at least. And he's probably still in there bitching and pissing and moaning and whining. And, and everybody comes out holding that little printout sheet. You know, it's like, I'm important. I got some medical. I, I, uh, you know, when I checked out of the ER, they tried to give me that sheaf of shit, which they'd already given me one before I left the actual examination room. They'd already given me one thing, and she was actually like giving me back the one that had my blue ink signature on it. And I go, no, y'all keep it. And uh, mine was actually, they stuck it in the bag that I had, because I had, <clears throat> had actually put on fresh pants while I was in the emergency room because the of the seepage from the seeps, the bones that they had you know, dressed them and admitted I didn't have gangrene and, I, and stuff. And, and I saw, you know, I, I brought my go bag and of course I'm going to put on a fresh pair of pants. Fuck yeah. Why not? Anyway, Warning report. And uh, just remember, it's not a sleeping bag. It's a fart sack. And it's, I'm saving it all for you, Greta Thunberg. And maybe you can power your jet with it as you fly around the world, advocating the death of all Jews. You fucking no good piece of shit, little slime ball cunt. That bitch is like 21, 22 years old now. She still don't have even skeeter bites. That's what will happen to you if you go vegan. You know? The girl doesn't have any breastuses, as black folks say it. Breastuses. I took a look at her the other day. She's like 20 now. At least 20-something. She still ain't got no titties. What's up with that, girlfriend? Later.